Here in our Windows 2012 Hyper-V Lab, if we go in and we right click on a virtual machine and then go into the settings, then down to memory, notice we've got the startup RAM, which is a different way of saying, uh, you know, the RAM for this virtual machine, this virtual memory could change. It's not the configured RAM, it's not the RAM that it will have forever, it's just the RAM that it starts with, the startup RAM. Now on this virtual machine, notice dynamic memory in this section here is all grayed out. That's because enable dynamic memory is not checked, so we don't have control over these settings. We're not using dynamic memory. In fact, I can't use dynamic memory until I power off this virtual machine and enable it. That's a very important point I wanted to make sure that you saw. Now something you can configure here is to weight this virtual machine's memory higher than other virtual machines memory. So you're effectively saying that this virtual machine and its memory has higher priority than other virtual machines and their memory. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here. Let's go ahead and power off this virtual machine so that we can configure the dynamic memory. With it powered off, I'll right click, go back into settings, down to memory, and notice now dynamic memory here is available to be checked. So if I check that checkbox, and I would encourage you to do this ahead of time on every one of your tier one or high priority servers that you think are going to have a dynamically fluctuating amount of virtual memory. In other words, they may just be virtual machines that you have trouble predicting the amount of memory that they will actually use. You could use this to see how much memory they really use in the real world with real applications and real users. And maybe one day you want to come back and, you know, reconfigure them to just have static memory and not use dynamic memory, but I highly doubt it. I think once you start using dynamic memory, you'll really love it and you'll wonder how you got along without it and why you don't use it on all of your virtual machines. So with dynamic memory enabled, now we have access to configure our minimum memory and our maximum memory, as well as our memory buffer. So again, the startup memory is what's up here. That's how much memory is going to be allocated to this virtual machine when it's powered on. We've got the minimum amount of memory that this virtual machine will ever be allocated, then the maximum amount of memory that this virtual machine will ever be allocated. Then lastly, we can specify what percentage memory buffer we want this virtual machine to be configured for. So this is what you're telling Hyper-V to allocate as a percentage of the currently demanded memory. So how much memory is actually in use by this virtual machine? How much additional memory should Hyper-V leave available should this virtual machine need it? In our case, to demonstrate how dynamic memory works, let's artificially set the startup RAM for this virtual machine very low. We'll set it down to just 512 megabytes, which is equal to the minimum RAM. We'll leave the maximum RAM at, let's say, 4096 or 4 gigabytes. So this Windows 2012 server, I'm expecting it to start up with very little RAM, just the 512 megabytes, to, but to very quickly increase its memory utilization up to the maximum amount of RAM. So we'll say OK here. And then I'll go ahead and right click on this virtual machine. I'll start it up. And then let's go down here to the memory tab so that we can monitor this virtual machine. We see here now that dynamic memory is enabled. That's how you check the status of each of your virtual machines to see if dynamic memory is or is not enabled. Here you can see the startup memory set to 512 megabytes, the minimum memory set to 512 as well, the maximum set to four gigs, and take a look at this, the assigned memory set to 512 megabytes. Now, this is what we're going to watch as this virtual machine boots up to see the status of the assigned memory, the memory demanded, and the memory status here, which is currently OK. So right now, you can see here the memory demand is increasing from 256 megabytes. And from here, I'm expecting it to just go up and up as the virtual machine boots up and the Windows services start to utilize more and more memory. As this happens, think about this for a second. What if you could set even your servers down as low as 5, 12 megabytes of uh, startup memory? Think of all the memory that would save, and that would allow you to run so many more virtual machines on each of your hosts 
increasing the virtual machine consolidation ratio. Now to get this virtual machine using more and more memory, let's go ahead and do something on it. Let's open up the console. Let's log in. We'll go down here to the start menu. We'll open up Internet Explorer. Then we'll open up some memory consuming websites here. And one more, we'll open up YouTube. Having all these tabs open are certain to take up some memory utilization. Let's go back and check the status of Hyper-V dynamic memory. Now we can see we've got 620 megabytes assigned to this virtual machine and the memory demand is 508 megabytes. That's still not enough to push this virtual machine very high. But don't worry, I've got another plan to really push up the memory utilization. I'm going to go back over here to this virtual machine and let's get some processes rolling on this. Let's go ahead and add some roles and features to this virtual machine. We'll go ahead and make this an Active Directory domain controller. We'll add these features. Click Next here. Go ahead and add the .NET Framework. Anything we can do to really get a lot of uh, utilization going on this virtual machine. I'll click Install here. We'll start that installation. And then I'll go over here and I've got some DVDs actually. I'm just going to go over here and right click. I'm going to copy some DVDs. I'm going to go to my desktop. Right click here and paste. And that'll start a large network file transfer. So with that transfer going, we've got the installation going. We've got a bunch of web pages going. This is probably a little bit more realistic for a server that might actually be in use by some users or maybe you as an admin. So now let's go back and check the status of our dynamic memory utilization. Back here in the Hyper-V Manager, we can see now the assigned memory for this virtual machine is up to 1.2 gigabytes. The memory demand is about a gig, 1085 there, and the memory status is still okay because we haven't yet reached the maximum amount of memory that we configured for this virtual machine. Now think about this for a minute. What if you had have assigned this virtual machine two or three gigabytes, which I would commonly do to most virtual machines. Uh, this virtual machine, even with all these different processes happening at once, is only using 1.2 gigs. So you just saved, let's say, uh, one, one gig and you know 756 megabytes. So one and three quarters gig uh, RAM uh, from this virtual machine is saved. So what if you had 20 virtual machines on this host? Right there you could save potentially 20 gigs of RAM using Hyper-V dynamic memory. So it's a very powerful feature and the one thing that you need to know right here where it says memory status, if you ever have any virtual machines where you've got a message there other than OK, you know that there's a problem with your memory utilization. Most likely you've reached the maximum amount of memory that you assigned to dynamic memory. But other than that, in my experience, Hyper-V dynamic memory works like a charm. Once you enable it, of course, remember the virtual machine has to be off, but once it's enabled and the virtual machine is powered back up, Hyper-V dynamic memory very efficiently allows you to save a tremendous amount of RAM across your Hyper-V host machines.